welcome to the Eat for Endurance podcast. My name is Claire Shorenstein, and I am a board-certified sports dietitian and endurance athlete. I provide virtual nutrition services through my private practice, Eat for Endurance, and I host this podcast because I love to share the nutrition stories of both professional and recreational athletes, while also teaming up with my sports dietitian colleagues to discuss a variety of important nutrition topics. I have an athlete nutrition profile for you guys today featuring runner and coach Amanda Katz. Amanda is a body neutral strength and run coach and believes that all bodies deserve a fitness experience without punishment, guilt, or shame. Amanda is a native New Yorker and absolutely hilarious. I am a big fan of her positive fueling and fitness messages that she sends on social media and on her own show between two coaches. She is so full of personality and I particularly love her frequent attacks on the toxic fitness, health, and wellness culture. So definitely check her out if you don't already. Before we dive in, I want to let you guys know that the Eat for Endurance podcast just turned five years old. I cannot believe it's been that long since I started this show. It started as just a little bit of a seedling of an idea in my head during a run, of course, and here we are five years later. It's been such a fun journey, and I'm really grateful to all my listeners who have helped me keep this show going. This remains a self-funded venture, so if you'd like to support the podcast, please visit my Patreon page, or you can also shop using my sports nutrition discount codes. These are not podcast sponsors, but it's an easy way to support me at no extra cost to you. So for instance, new customers can save 20% off Scratch Labs with code EATFORENDURANCE20, and you can get 15% off Momentous products with code EATFORENDURANCE15. I will include these and other links in the show notes. All right, here is my episode with Coach Amanda Katz. Amanda, welcome to the Eat for Endurance podcast. So excited to have you here. How's it going? Oh, thank you for having me. I am, everything is going well. Uh, It's 5.30 p.m. here in New York City, which means I, uh, this is my, this is my bedtime, if you will. No, it's, (laughs) it is, uh, I start my days at, uh, at 6 a.m. And I finish my days by lunchtime. So it's a little bit of an untraditional schedule. So it is really, I'm feeling the week winding down at this time and I feel good. Yeah. Yeah. And you're, so you work at Equinox and you do some private stuff, right? Yes. So I am a, uh, I am a full-time group fitness instructor. I teach for a brand called Equinox. Um, I, I teach cycling classes uh, running classes, as well as strength and conditioning classes. I also serve as a consultant for Equinox. Um, I create work on creating programming for them as well as educating our group fitness instructors. Um, and, and my private business is I have a virtual one-on-one personal training business. I have one, I have one in-person client and it's only cause she's 16 and lives very close to my apartment. Uh, And, uh, I, I'm a run coach, uh, as well. Uh, I have a small part that is my business, but I work on the running explained coaching team, uh, as a run coach there. Yeah. Awesome. 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 Nice. And you are a native New Yorker. (laughs) You live on the Upper West Side now. Is that right? That's right. That's right. I was, uh, I was born and raised in Queens, New York, and I had been here ever since I try, I do travel a lot, which is wonderful. I love traveling. Um, but I have, I moved to the upper West side more than, I think it's more, yeah, more than 10 years ago. Um, and I've kind of stayed within the same, like two to three block radius since. And I don't think there's anything worse than moving unnecessarily. So oh, moving's the worst. I would, yeah, I tried to avoid it as much as possible, but yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, you are my athlete guest today. And as my audience knows, I like to start these interviews out by digging into your nutrition route. So I'd love to hear about the memories you have surrounding food and meal times. you know, when you were growing up in Queens. Yeah. So when I was a kid, so I come from a a mixed family. Uh, Queens is also in case, in case you missed it, Queens is the most diverse uh, area in definitively in the United States, maybe the world. Uh, We have, 
we have a mashup of every kind of culture, religion, um, ethnicity, and and I love Queen. So as such, my parents are I'm I'm a mutt, so Dominican Jew. That's that's who I am. So we had a lot of um, at Passover. Uh, at the Seder, we had arroz con gandules, and we also had, <laughs> and we also had a Seder plate, right? We we yeah. um we had we had matzo pudding that my grandmother would make, and um, matzo pudding. I have not tried that. <laughs> this was my grandmother's specialty. Uh, mm. So it's it actually it's I never had stuffing growing up until I literally met my now husband who is not Jewish um stuffing in my family was matzo pudding oh interesting oh so it was a savory dish it's so savory yes she oh she, I was I was like like thinking no. like a sweet thing okay got it okay oh it was so savory and delicious she would use chicken broth I'm not a cook I'm mm-hmm. really good at seasoning but I would watch <laughs> her um I come from a a, a family of incredibly incredibly talented cooks including my now husband um i'm just not the one so uh as a child i have really fond memories around holidays and then i have probably very limited memories around family and food because i don't recall us ever sitting at the dinner table to eat any meal Mm. um and when I think about that as an, as an adult, it, it has definitely challenged me. Uh, it, it definitely did provide its own challenges that I did. I was unaware of until I've gone through some, some therapeutic practices <laughs> to unpack <laughs> kind of my relationship with food and my body. Um, I, so I had, I had a pretty positive relationship with eating despite not ever being at the dinner table, I would say that my, um, the food in my house, uh, was almost a little too clean. Hmm. Um, my, my mom, uh, came from, we didn't have, we had, everything was organic in my house at the time. Uh, it, it used to be called fresh fields, whole foods, uh, uh, that was the only place my parents would shop fresh fields and health nut stores and very big on vitamins and supplements and, um, Gary Null. And I, I enjoyed food, but I remember going to my friends' homes and like seeing Oreos and milk and that not being a thing in my house growing up. Uh, soda, not a thing in my house growing up. I had one interesting experience. My mom was a high school principal and I think normal children probably went to camp when they were young, but I was not at camp. Instead, I was her assistant at at the school in Queens in Long Island city. That sounds fun. (laughs) If you know me now, you, you understand me a little bit more. So that was my second job. My first job, I worked in the bagel shop, of course, in Queens, which is, um, that was my first job and the hardest job I've ever had. Mm. So, but I, again, had this positive relationship around food. I became a vegetarian for a short period of time after starting at my mom's school. So around 15 or 16 years old, I was a vegetarian. And the reason being, I had, I saw something weird in lunch meat. And that Mm. kind of carried for, I was, I was a vegetarian for almost 10 years, um, throughout college. Again, having a really positive relationship with food in college. I don't recall any restriction, um, until I got into, and I didn't exercise frankly, uh, until I was out of university at Buffalo. I was getting my, I got my business degree there. And then I got my master's at Baruch college here in New York city. And I was on the trajectory to, I I worked in politics. Um, I, I wanted to be an, uh, a leader in nonprofit business. I, I was, I was the director of communications and marketing for two large nonprofits here in the New, in New York city, as well as working in, in government. And that was right around the time where I started to 
get insecure about a couple of things. One being my body and uh, how I felt in clothing. And the second being um, the lack of control I had around me. My jobs were very stressful. And I felt as though uh, I had to be on all the time. I had, I had one of those jobs where you have three cell phones. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um and and a laptop and a separate tablet uh and an and a and a phone number and a different phone number and i um it was an it was a very stressful environment i was also one of the younger executives on the team which came with its own challenges of being respected and disrespected and underpaid and overwhelmed i started to become, I would, I would categorize it as initially it was orthorexia mm -hmm. where I became really obsessed with like the quality and the kind of food I was eating. I didn't have a relationship again at that time with fitness. So it wasn't, uh, it wasn't, um, the disordered behaviors didn't present themselves in exercise. It was around nutrition at first with no understanding really of nutrition, just what I experienced in my home. Mm -hmm. and, and so you weren't, you weren't active as a kid at all. Like you didn't grow up doing any sports or anything at all. So my parents, um, so I was in dance school growing up and my mother saw, it's a good question. You're right. I skipped over this. My mom. No, it's all good. It's all good. I was, a, I was a little, I still, I still am a little one, but I was a little one and, um, I lacked my mom saw that I lacked a lot of confidence and my mom as an educator was really uh, motivated to make sure that her daughter felt confident and she did the right thing. I think looking back, uh, she said, how about martial arts? And I was in martial arts and she was right. It, <laughs> it definitely made me a more confident child. Um, I also randomly was on like, I didn't play consistently though. It was like one time a week practice softball or basketball. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of little leagues in Queens. Um, mm -hmm. So I was always in a, I was always in an extracurricular activity, um, mm -hmm. but I wasn't, I wouldn't say I was an active, like in Queens, you kind of just like after school, you go out. You have five bucks on you and that's really it. Like you come home when you come that's home. That's your activity. I'm... Right. <laughs> right. My you're, <laughs> you're walking the streets. Like you're, yeah. you're, you're walking the streets. You have a skip it. Hey, that's maybe. active. That's it is active. active. <laughs> it is active. Um, I guess I compare it to the reason why now, now that I live in Manhattan and I work with a certain population of parents, I, I am, that's my relative. Like I, yeah, sure. I, not, I, I get it. I get it. I, get I know it. you know, I know you know. <laughs> but if you're, if you, you weren't know, running, you weren't on the track team, like all that kind of stuff. That's kind no. of what we're getting at here. But you, Mark, I could totally picture you. I mean, I don't know you that well. I just know you kind of online, but just from what I've seen online, I'm just like picturing like younger Amanda, just like kicking the shit out of somebody. <laughs> I can totally imagine. That's an accurate, that's an accurate uh, description. You're of me. spunky. Let's just put it that yes. way. Yes. I got spunk. I got spunk. You got spunk. And to be fair, <laughs> I've gotten into my fair share of fights in my adult life, physical ones. So you know what? It, 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 it is Not what surprised. it is. Yeah. Verbal. I, I, it's, I, in my mind, it's like more like verbal, like online fights, but like, <laughs> Hey, maybe physical ones too. Like bring it. <laughs> it's not, it's, it's I'm not initiating it. Let's just say that. Yeah, um, yeah I get it. Yes. So anyway, <laughs> it's very pleasant. um. Yes. Yeah. No. So, so, you're right. so there mm -hmm. was some level of yes. You're right. I was an, I was a normal active child for a for a New York City adolescent. I but, that, but running was not in the picture. I mean, you're a runner now. That came later. We understand that. Um, yes. And yeah. And and so what was I going to ask? Oh. Yeah, I mean, you identify yourself, you know, as a body neutral eating disorder informed coach and and we kind of put a pin in what you were telling me, but basically what you were starting to get at is your own 
struggles with eating disorders and disordered eating and all of that. And so, yeah, maybe we can kind of pick that thread back up. Um, I heard you mention on your own podcast how your mom had a history with eating disorders. And so I'm not sure how much that kind of played into it or maybe 100%. not. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, how you're describing your household, even though yes. I'm sure there were good intentions, it sounds like it was a little bit sterile from a food perspective, I guess you could say, or strict or however you want to say. So, yeah, maybe we can talk a little bit. I mean, it sounds like overall that your relationship with food and body was pretty good, which I mean, thank God a lot. Of, I mean, a lot of times for for girls growing up and especially or anybody, you know, in their teenage years, that's a tough time, especially in a house like you're describing. Um, but yeah, maybe you can kind of pick that thread back up about kind of your own story with with uh, disordered eating and disorders. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So uh, the um, I my co-host on the podcast that I host between two coaches, uh, my co-host, Nick, was like, gave me the space to kind of share my story, which I've I have never done. Um, my I would say that for the better part of my 20s, I was uh, and I'm in my mid 30s now. I was uh, I dabbled in orthorexia, anorexia, binge eating disorder. Um, I was incredibly restrictive with my food intake. Um, I, a lot of my disorder existed as many addictions and disorders do in hiding. Uh, I would say that I had the first time that I sought out support was when one of my best friends who's still my best friend today actually came over to my apartment and she's like, I'm worried about you. I don't know what to do, but I'm worried about you. And that kind of lit a spark in me to get to a place where I started to look like I didn't have a problem anymore because I was, I was so knee deep in restrictive eating that it was very physically apparent on my body. And I wasn't, again, I, I was not engaging in exercise either. It, it was, it was, um, so the amount of energy that I had um, been consuming day to day was sufficient basically for me to work and not work. Uh, so I started to, I would say that at that point I was, uh, it took, it took some time and I became nutritionally rehabilitated, um, which was awesome. However, there were still, because eating disorders are mental health disorders there were still some clear underlying issues that I was, I was still restricting, even though I looked like I wasn't. Were you in like a program or in like an outpatient program or anything? Or like, what did you do? No, to, I, or you were just I doing can, this? You were just I doing this yourself. myself. I can handle yeah, yeah, it myself. Yeah, yeah. I can. I got some, yeah. That was the first time. I can yeah, handle yeah. it myself. I got it. Because mm -hmm. I also, uh, my, we don't talk about in, in the cultures that exist in my home and in my family, we don't talk about problems. You just, mm. you deal with them. And then later they say like, I'm glad you took care of that. <laughs> that sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you know, you get it. You know? you yeah, get I, it. I figured yeah. you would. I figured you might. So, mm. um, so, so I was good for, for a bit. And then I was good in the eyes of, of mm. those looking at sure. me. Sure. Uh, I then, I would say it's about one or two years later, I just went, I just went back. I was like, mm. well, everything that I was wearing before is not fitting me well. And I'm also in a place now where I'm in my mid to late twenties. So I'm like, okay, uh, when is she going to settle down? She has a little, not, not that I was so concerned about finding a gentleman, it was more like I would go out and I would feel uncomfortable in my body. So I'm like, I'm sitting this one out. Uh, and dieting, I guess it's, it dieting just became something that I, it, it started small. It starts with the powdered peanut butter and uh Ugh, the powdered peanut butter oh my and God, the art six stuff. zero oh that's just the worst <laughs> and and the zero calorie noodles mm -hmm. it starts like that it starts with like mm -hmm. little things 
And which then, are such like big parts of New York City. I feel like, especially yes. like young, young women, like those are just normal things, you know, very Nobody normal. About those things. Yeah. Very normal. Started to have, you know, then, oh, then it was like, because I knew I'd be going out, I would take a laxative. So it started like small things, but herbal. It was like, it was like the, the, the bark. It was like, so little things, but then it, I had no understanding of balance at that time. So it started to become more than little things and it grew bigger. The second time. Exercise, exercise was still not, you know what I was doing? No, not really. I would go to, I'd go to Zumba with my mom on the weekends, which I actually really enjoyed and haven't done in a while, but really enjoyed Zumba. Um, we would go to the studio there and, um, but again, maybe one or two times a week. Mm. Uh, I then at this point, I was sick of my own shit. So, oh, I side note. I did when I was started to eat more. I did exercise. I was a member of Lucille Roberts. Do you remember Lucille Roberts? That sounds the familiar. Yeah. Red yeah, carpet, yeah, yeah. all yeah. women's gym. So, yeah, 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 so yeah. there were a few years that I was a member, uh, two years, I would say that I was a member there because that was right before I moved into the Upper West Side um, and really enjoyed it. That's actually where I fell in love with strength training because in the group fitness setting, like they would have weightlifting classes, they would have boxing. <laughs> But again, it wasn't excessive and it was actually, I think, I, I think I had a really healthy relationship with exercise when, when I was there and it felt like a community and really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. So I then, so then going back to the restriction, I kind of started, I started to restrict and I wasn't act, as active as much anymore because my job was becoming a little more hectic. And, um, at that point I realized I got, my weight had become so low and I'd become so apparently on edge all the time that I saw, I noticed it was starting to impact my faculties. Mm -hmm. So I had been visiting my parents and I was in the hallway in the apartment building and I kind of just like fell over and my dad was there and I was like, okay, this is, I can't do this anymore. I just got so tired of being tired all the time. <laughs> and I didn't tell this to them at the time because I didn't want them to uh, feel like I was a burden. That's something I've fought through my whole life. Uh, and I, and I put myself in, um, an outpatient, uh, treatment center here in New York city. It's balance treatment center. Oh yeah. And, I know balance. I've had some clients there and I, uh, really enjoyed therapy in a group setting. I did 12 step program. Uh, I still am relatively active when I can be in 12 step program. Um, it changed my life for the better. And, um, I'm, I, I not currently right now, but I became a sponsor. I really, I really dived in at around the same time that I got sick of my not eating. I also happened to stop drinking alcohol. I was like, I really don't need this. So I've, I've been, um, and I, didn't have an excessive relationship with alcohol by any means. Um, mm -hmm. but I noticed that it was just another thing that when I was not eating, I was getting really sick when I would go out with my friends and drink alcohol and it wasn't yeah. even a lot. It just, that's, that's what your body does when it, yep. it doesn't have food in it. <laughs> yep. So, yep. yeah, so that's, um, so I've, I've been, um, I'm a, I'm a sober girly and, um, uh, 12 step program was really the thing that, that saved my life shortly thereafter. Um, I started to dabble in fitness, more specifically cycling classes and I enjoyed them. And I thought to myself at the time I was still working in nonprofit management. And I thought to myself, um, 
yeah, I can, I can do this. This is something I'd really enjoy doing. And my mother always thought I'd be an educator. So I was like, she'll think I'm educating just in a different <laughs> capacity. <laughs> and, um, and to be, and, and I grabbed some very basic credentials initially. Um, I was certified in, um, in cycling, certified in group fitness. And then I'd later would get, become a certified personal trainer, dab mm -hmm. TRX kettlebells. I've, um, yeah. continuing education. I became a run coach. So it kind of within about, um, a year and a half, I transitioned from working in a corporate setting to teaching fitness full time, like seven days a week. So it was a lot on my body. And if I did not eat, it was not going to be good. So it almost was, I found that it actually was a positive thing initially. And I, and I still do, but now I have balance in my life and I no longer teach seven days a week. I no longer teach 25 to 30 classes a week. I teach half of that and that will be even less, uh, <laughs> come, come the fall, uh, come the winter. So, um, running didn't enter the picture until I was closer to 30. Um, mm. and I, I really just start, I, I started to run when I started to solo travel more as a way to explore, um, the world to my feet and just like time-based, like I would go out 10 minutes one way in Kenya and then I come home 10 minutes the other way <laughs> and, and I really enjoyed it. And I've, I had that, I, I will say I've, I've, had a positive relationship with running because of how I started. And I think the timing of my life. Yeah. It's really interesting actually, because you, you know, your story, just hearing it all. Um, cause again, I didn't, I didn't know a lot of this. I heard like little tidbits on your show and just from your Instagram, whatever. Um, but I think in my mind, I, I assumed that you had been active for a long time and like <laughs> running, not necessarily that running was like a like long standing thing, but you know, often, I mean, I think when people become instructors, it's kind of like a second career. It is often like you find it for yourself and then you become so passionate about it. You know, like I actually just interviewed Jess Woods, who's another coach who was one. in this like, yeah, who, who uh, you know, was, was had a very, very intense job and discovered, you know, well, she was active for a long time before, but like still kind of really just had this passion for fitness and was like, yeah, no, that's where I need to go. So it's really interesting to hear for you how you were kind of active, but like not particularly you weren't doing sports and going to college for sports and all stuff. And then you found it and you're like, Oh yeah, that's amazing. And I can certainly relate to that because I was never like a quote unquote athlete, you know, growing mm. up. And I too found running or came back to it kind of later in life in my late twenties. And, but that's what inspired me to completely change my career. So, um, you know, everyone has their own different journeys with this stuff and it's always really fun to hear about it. So, yeah. So talk to me about kind yeah. of the running piece. Um, you know, so running into the picture when you said when you're around 30, I see all your medals hanging in the back. Um, I mean, so clearly you run a very exposed like, brick wall. Like I have, like, yeah, I have, yeah, there you go. I have the thumbtacks in the brick. My husband's like, are you going to buy something? To hang? I'm like, why would I do that? Why would I do Mine that? Mine are like I all rotting in a box somewhere. So it's better than me. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, so you started running and you're run coach now and all that. And, and mm -hmm. so yeah, what is running? What's your relationship to running now? Like, are you training for events? I mean, you're showing, you're posting these videos of yourself running all the time. Um, <laughs> let's hear a little bit more about Amanda, the runner. Hey, everybody. Sorry to interrupt. Just a few quick announcements. It has been back to school season for us over here. I'm sure it is for many of you as well. And despite the craziness right now, I am pretty excited for summer to be over because I love routine. It is great to have my kids back in school. And so to celebrate the end of summer and the start of my absolutely favorite season, including my birthday, I am offering a very rare discount on my one-to-one -one monthly programs. I literally never discount these, but if you sign up for a one-to-one one -one monthly program, either my two-month or my three-month, you're gonna save $100 off of your first two months. I offer free discovery calls to your prospective clients. So if you're on the fence, you're not sure, you want to learn more, you want to go over your nutrition goals, you can head on over to my website services page. You can go to the show notes. You can book a free call. We can chat and you can see if one-to-one -one coaching is for you. The other thing I just want to ask is if you are enjoying this podcast and you haven't already given me a five-star rating or written a review, 
I would so, so appreciate it if you just take a minute of your time to do that. It really does help the show. It helps support me. Um, so head on over, make sure you're following and subscribe to the show. Thank you so much. All right, let's get back to the episode. Amanda, the runner. So Amanda, the runner, uh, I guess I've been, I've been, I've a runner. I would consider myself one for probably six years, six years. Yeah. So that sounds about right. Um, Amanda, the runner does not actually, I have my medals here, but I don't really enjoy races. I really just enjoy the time that I get to myself outdoors. And if you're familiar with, uh, the upper West side, I happen to live right between Riverside park and central park. Oh, nice. and that's a runner's dream in New York. Um, yes. so I, <sighs> Amanda, the runner is, uh, I, I really run because it, it gives me a lot of joy. I tend to run solo more often than not. Like I can count on one hand, the amount of times I've ran with other people in my life. Um, it is a time I think because my job is so I work with literally hundreds of people a week. Um, between my private business and my classes. Um, again, I teach 15 to 20 group fit, 15 now group, group fitness classes a week, but I'm interacting with so many people that running actually gives me the opportunity to not interact with people and be with myself in my head. And uh, I really enjoy that. So I do sign up for races. Um, I do, I am currently training for a marathon, but I don't, um, I prefer actually not to, um, uh, share my, my, uh, my race plans because yeah. I find that, and I, I'm not as like, I sometimes remember to turn on my Strava. Sometimes I don't, <laughs> I'm not a, like when people talk to me, they're like, you, you know, do, what kind of, what kind of pace are you hit? I don't know. Like I don't, I ran the New York city marathon. I didn't wear a watch. Like I have, I feel as though my, my, um, my history of being so tied to numbers and perfectionism and specificity around my body and control running. I actually try to have the opposite relationship. And although flexibility within a framework is what I, how I, co how I coach myself and the, and my philosophy as, as a run coach. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think uh, structure is great. Schedules are great. A framework is great, but the only way to play the long game and to be successful is if there's flexibility. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of how, that's how I am as a runner. So you don't love racing, but you're signed up for a marathon. I, 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 that's right. Well, um, I really, so one of the things that, um, I won't ask which one I'll respect your privacy. No, 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 that's okay. That's okay. Uh, I have, um, I have a very, very, uh, very good, very deep rooted relationship with my family. Um, and it's grown deeper in the last couple of years because of some challenges we've had. Um, and my dad and I, we started a couple of years ago, making it time for us to, to do these races. So, Oh, he runs too. No, he does not. Oh. Run. He's not a runner. Oh. <laughs> my dad is my, my dad is, um, my dad is a public safety officer at CUNY. New He's the most New York guy you've ever met born in Bensonhurst. Like he, he likes, like he'll go out to the woods and he'll hike and he'll, he was like the OG rucker. Like that's my guy. That's my guy. Um, but he doesn't run. No, he doesn't run. He has a pull-up bar in his office. I got him Bowflex for his, uh, for his birthday. The guy is, he was a gold's gym guy. Um, gold's but gym. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's an OG, <laughs> OG. Um, but he doesn't run, but he loves being outdoors. And mm -hmm. I just like, I book him a hotel room. I get myself one and we have like, we have a time and I've noticed that I've really, I've done world major marathons. I've noticed that I've really gravitated towards smaller courses in these last couple of years. So, um, it's just like an easy drivable place to get to. We make 
a weekend out of it and it allows him to kind of turn off from um, being the superhero to everyone in my family and, and at his job uh, and allows, and allows me to feel like, to feel supported by my dad and for him to actually like enjoy supporting me. That's so nice. It's really nice. It's really nice. And um, I'm really, I'm really fortunate. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's definitely like whether you're doing, you know, I mean, obviously like if you're at a, you know, trail race, race ultra, you have your crew and just, or just if you're on a marathon, you have people cheering for you. When I did some of the like bigger road marathons when earlier, like back when I was doing those things, like my parents would fly out from California to wherever I was and it'd be my little cheer squad and they were like team Claire shirts and it was really cute. Um, but yeah, that's, that's awesome. I love that yeah. for you. Yeah. It's great yeah. for you guys. Okay. Me too. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Very and cool. it really, it, it relieves a lot of like, because I don't, sh- I, I'm, I kind of, I really rely heavily on it's, it's in a very anxiety provoking environment, the race environment, in my opinion. Um, mm-hmm. and with smaller courses, there's less logistics. Also, yes. I don't tell anyone. So they, there's no, like, I'll track you. And it's like, no, actually yeah. I turned off that setting. I don't, I'm, <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I don't yeah. need you. It's, it's all good. I kind of, I take it as an opportunity to disconnect from social media communications with others outside of like my family and, and close friends. And I get into a really beautiful meditative state the days leading up to a race. And I treasure that time with myself because, uh, it doesn't happen very often that I get to shut off and do something for myself when it comes to Mm -hmm. fitness. And, and it's really a chance for me to do something for myself. I feel like I, I, like we need to recruit you into trail running from what you're describing. (laughs) I've, I've heard that. I've heard that. I feel, um, I feel like we really need to come over. To I am. I'm getting the ankles for it. I'm getting oh, my yeah. ankles ready for it. Um, yeah, I've, uh, I've made several friends through, um, I'm, I'm sponsored by, I'm on the Brooks running collective team. Mm. And one of my dear friends, like my closest friend in the crew, Justin is an ultra runner, a trail runner. He lives in Fairbanks, Alaska. And the way that we talk about running is I feel just so aligned with it. Um, So he's, he's going to, he's going to support me in my first trail race. We're going to pick something out and um, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Actually um, another person on the Brooks crew, Mike, who ran Mount Tam 50 K with me, we like just picked each other. What's his last name? Mariano. I want to say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. yeah, You know, Mike. Yeah. Um, He's out here and I ran Mount Tam 50 K, which is this gorgeous 50 K. And you know, like in trail runs, you just kind of pick people up. We just like randomly ran 18 miles together. I love that. <laughs> like, and basically become like besties by the end. It was great. New York life stories, you know, it was, it was great. Um, but no, he had mentioned uh, when I posted on Instagram that I was talking with you, he's like, Oh, I love Amanda. Oh. She's so oh. New York. I'm like, yes, she is a New Yorker. Um, but uh, anywho, thank you. Mike. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> But yes, I, I feel like we need to pull you over to some trail running. I think it sounds like that would be a very good fit for you, but uh, I'll Damn. let you decide what you think about that. Um, tell me about kind of, this, I know we've talked a lot about like non-nutrition things. So let's talk nutrition. Tell me about some of your favorite sports nutrition products. What are you, I know everyone does, this is all about what you do. So this is about you. This isn't about, you know, we're never recommending, this is what you should all do. What does Amanda do? What have you found um, that works for you in the in the context of, you know, endurance running and all the other sports and or just active things that you do with yourself? Let's talk yeah. about that. Yeah, but I think what you said initially is really important. I yeah. don't want anyone listening to this to think that I'm a normal. Like I cannot feed myself, quote unquote, normally. I'm not just a runner because my work is so physically taxing. Yes. Um, I'm. I'm teaching a couple of cycling classes a day, um, five days a week. I'm doing strength. I'm demonstrating strength training. I'm on, if I'm not doing the exercise, I'm on my feet for, for a period of the day that it is an endurance event. (laughs) So, um, so I, it's so important. Uh, so even before I became a runner, when I first started teaching, I, I realized that 
the way that I was nourishing my body was not going to be enough. I would need more. Um, so I, some of my, um, favorite, uh, ways to, uh, get in the fuel I need is, uh, liquid nutrition. Um, especially because of my, my activity, um, when I'm on the bike and I'm teaching back-to-back -back cycling classes, I don't have time to get off and, uh, and grab a sandwich or, or a bagel. Like I have to teach the next class in 10 minutes. Something has to be digesting in my body quickly. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I often in my, um, I have basically three shaker bottles on me, um, uh, every day. And, um, I have, I have a protein, I have a protein shake that also has carbohydrates in it. I like, um, the brands I like are, uh, bear performance nutrition. I really like the taste of that protein powder. I like mm -hmm. scratch for my carbohydrates. Um, and so I include that in, in my bottles as well. Um, I have in my bag, uh, I will, I, I run, um, about five days a week and, um, three of those days I am teaching as well. So I have to fit it in between my teaching slash clients. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I will also use just like easy nutrition, like gels and I'll, mm -hmm. I'll have gels in my backpack as well Any as favorites. Yeah. I like, um, I like the SIS beta fuel, mm -hmm. um, a lot of 40 grams of carbohydrates in a pack. That's easy for me. And it goes down really well. Um, I've also like never second that's mm -hmm. a, a higher sodium, um, yep. higher carb, which I've been enjoying. Um, and most recently I started to, uh, take crank sports, which I really like. Um, again, a higher, a higher, uh, carbohydrate, uh, gel that tastes really good and has a higher sodium, um, count because, uh, I'm a salty hoe. So, uh, she needs a little more salt. <laughs> she, needs more, she, needs, she needs a little more salt. Um, but so those are, um, and then I have some also, so, uh, I also take element tea, um, mm -hmm. or, or some who, who aren't from New York say element. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, uh, uh, so those are some of my, I think. And then I, I also like, um, there's, uh, I, I also use a lot of bars or like bags of pretzels. Mm -hmm. Um, I like pretzels. I like dried fruit and I like, so during the day, it's a lot of that dried fruit, pretzels, everything I just mentioned. And, um, I like the Bear Bells protein bars. Mm -hmm. We sell those at Trader Joe's, and mm -hmm. uh, that's that's an easy one for me to to get my hands on. And so it, it sounds like it's hard to kind of get a meal in for like a huge <laughs> chunk of your day. Is that is that because it's so stacked? Yes, yes. So yes, so I start my day like in the morning. I'll have, um, I'll have, but it's like five a.m but I get it done. Like I'll have a, mm -hmm. I'll have a cup of tea with, um, a piece of toast and some banana. And then I kind of just have to start moving. So I just rely on a lot of liquid or easily digestible nutrition in my backpack. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah. so then the first, like then the meal meal comes around. I finish tea. I I'm done every day on purpose, uh, by design by around 1 30 PM. That's actually when I have my first cup of coffee. I don't, uh, I don't, um, rely on caffeine as a mm -hmm. fitness instructor. I noticed very early on caffeine can be very taxing on my vocal cords. Oh, so interesting. Okay. Just dried it out a little bit more and I didn't like that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I have a cup of coffee just as ritual, like with whatever I'm eating around that time. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I, I feel like I, I've started, I'm like starting a new series. It's like the life, the secret life of New York city fitness instructors and their what's in their backpacks. <laughs> it's, like, it's like the new series. Um, it gets, I just identified the nutrition products. It, it's scarier than that though. What is a surprising thing in your backpack that no one would ever guess is in there? No, I'm actually, maybe I'm not kidding. Maybe I'll ask that question or give me a look. <laughs> I'm looking, I'm looking, at my, that? I'm looking at my backpack. Um, 
I guess some weird things that, that every group fit, at least somebody who's been doing this for a while has on them. It, I always have, I have an abundant amount of hair scrunchies, um, earplugs, earplugs. Yeah. Gets yeah, loud. Because I, yeah, because my my well, my youngest client's sixteen. My eldest client, she is in her late eighties, and nice. she takes class with me. And so, I'm sorry, but Nicki Minaj is gonna play at this volume. So, <laughs> put it on. Oh, or put it's not it out. for you. Oh, it's for someone else. Oh, got it. I was like, for you. Oh yeah. No, no, no. I'm no, no. I not see. For- it yeah, gets yeah. crazy loud in some of those studios. It, it is does. a little loud. Not, I'm not that loud, but the music is playing and you can hear it. And yes, I just, yes, and, yes. and we have to be, we have to be sensitive to all of our members' needs. Um, yes, wind, wind screens for the microphone that I have. Um, and I, get, I don't know, floss is that weird? Mouthwash? <laughs> I used to, no. No, not really. Not for what you do. I don't no, think so. No, no, no. Yeah, I always have yeah. a change of clothes in there. And um, I have all of my um, all of my workouts are, I'm very old school. It's all in a notebook. I have like, uh, like a note. It's literally in the front of the room with me. I have a mm. notebook. I have a yeah. old school stopwatch. And even like my music does not live like in any sort of Spotify. Or, like I- yeah. I was the OG like Napster, LimeWire. I still have music, <laughs> Kazaa. So I just pull all those tunes from my iTunes, and they just exist on a device. And you get what you get. You don't get upset. So um, that's yeah. Oh so I guess goodness. not that weird. Normal for a group no. fitness and truck bear. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Um, okay, so. I mean, your 5 a.m. meal is pretty small. It's not, it's more of a yeah. little snack. So yeah. what is, what may, might be, and I'm sure it varies, but what might be your first meal? Like what are you usually looking forward to when you've just had this crazy, busy, huge chunk of time from 6 a.m. to 1.30 teaching fitness? I, I like, I have like three staples. I'll have, okay. So since I go home every Sunday, home is Queens. So I live on the island of Manhattan just to give everyone some context. I still get bagels from Queens. So what I'll do is I'll get like, when I go to the bagel shop before visiting my parents, um, I'll have a bagel for myself when I visit them, but I'll also buy extra to put in the freezer here. So Mm -hmm. we got to have bagels on hand. So I'll have, I'll have a bagel with, um, you had a great egg salad recipe. Yeah, it was good. So yeah. your girl has dabbled in the egg salad. Um, <laughs> I'm obsessed with egg salad. <laughs> so good. So that or like I'll have I'll have cheese on it with some fruit. And fruits for me, like it's honey crisp apple or bust when it comes to the apple criteria in this house. Um I also really love berries. So I, blueberries, um well, any berry, I don't discriminate. Or I'll have uh, I'll have a big bowl of oatmeal, and I'll have it with almond milk, cinnamon, peanut butter, and I'll have again fruit with it. Love that. Um, and then finally, the latest thing in my rotation, and I think it's because you find that when you're so restrictive, there are certain. When I was younger, I I decided that dairy was bad. I was also told that I was allergic at a young age to dairy. Mm-hmm. So now in an effort to revolt against all of the soy cheese that I ate, I dairy is now big in, in my life. So I, um, I buy like a big thing of yogurt now, add granola, berries, peanut butter, cinnamon, and I'll make like a nice parfait bowl, if you will, when I get mm. home. And I've really mm-hmm. been enjoying that. So that's like, yeah. My, yeah. I saw on Instagram that you've never had cottage cheese before. Is no. that for real? Yeah, that's okay. one what that's one diety thing, quote unquote, uh, that I never dabbled in. So yeah, you know it's funny because like I remember a little bit from my diety days where I was just like, oh cottage cheese, I can't do it again. It's kind of so I've res- like back when it made this resurgence and it was like super trendy and everyone was like whipping cottage cheese. I was like really resisting that. 
And but then recently I've kind of been like, okay, I'll try the cottage cheese thing. And I put a little oh. bit in my eggs. And actually, I put some this morning in my oatmeal just to like boost the protein. It's actually really good. That's I'm actually great. a huge fan now. With like, I had this delicious bowl of banana oatmeal, and then I put a big scoop of cottage cheese just because it's really easy to get the protein up. Blueberries, honey, nuts. It's super delicious. Just an FYI. You know <laughs> in case what? You ever want to so, go there? <laughs> yes, yes. I think that my, um, I have, because I've never had it, I would mm-hmm. never, I would never say I will never have it. I think my tea sure. with cottage cheese is where I'm starting to see a pop up. Okay. Yeah. Where I like to do, if you follow me on social media, every one, once every week or once every couple of weeks, I do like drop your bagel order. And a lot of yes. the people who follow me are actually not from New York. So this is always very interesting to me to hear what other people are putting on their bagels. Yeah, I would never put it on a bagel. That's like scary. So that was, but that was an answer that I was getting. I know. And so I was like, it's yeah. not possible. Like y'all, it's not possible. This is a thing that's happening. And then all of a sudden the algorithm took me to a place I didn't want to see. And <laughs> people are putting it in the oven and, oh. and it's like a bread Pot dupe. of cheese in the oven? It's a bread dupe and I'm not. I'm not interested. No, I don't. No, thank I you. I don't want it. No, no. Yeah. Cottage cheese is not the next cauliflower. Like, yeah. Leave no, her alone. So <laughs> I'm, so I'm here Got for, it. you're, you're using it also. Like, I think it's, that's great. Like you're increasing your protein. You're enjoying what you're eating. Like that ticks all the boxes for me. Yeah. It's not punishment. It's not, it's not <laughs> pretending like cauliflower is bread or something. Um, sure. Yeah. So wait, so what is your bagel order then? Since uh, that's, I love that. That was a very funny series, by the way. I enjoyed <laughs> reading those answers. <laughs> yeah, it's my most engaged with content. So I don't know what that, that says. So when I, so my first job, as I was sharing earlier, was at the bagel shop. I was 14 years old. And when I say the bagel shop, that's the name of the bagel shop in Queens. And it's like, a, okay, it's a hole in the wall. Very, it's, it's a very good bagel shop. But like no one, it's not going to go viral on TikTok or anything like sure, that. Sure. So it, it's still sacred. Okay. It's sacred. Yeah. So that's where I yeah. worked and it's still open to this day and it's by my parents' house. That's, is that where you go to get your bagels? Yes. And you go, okay. Yeah. 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 I mean, 80 cents <laughs> for a bagel. Can you Shut fight up. That? Can you fight that? Can you fight that? Wait, it's 80 cents now? 80 cents now. Okay. Okay. Like I would go to Essa bagels, which I love and adore. And granted they are like the size of your head, but they're like $3 now or something crazy. No, Nuts. I can't be the one. I can't be the one. No, I will not. So yes, that's when I say hole that's in nuts. the wall, like I know, okay. I know. I need so to go this there. Is, this is also why, this is also why I store them in my freezer mm. because like what we got a ball on a budget. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're living in new york i need i still yeah. need to pay rent so yeah yeah so i ex- i experimented with a ton of bagels so one of my favorites is actually not a bagel but you'll appreciate this is a bialy love a bialy good with, stuff with melted cheese and tomato delicious mm. i can actually have a Yum. couple of those and be be happy with that so yeah. that and then i all, my tried and true is i'll get a sesame bagel mm-hmm. and i'll have and I'll, cause they don't have Munster cheese at my bagel oh, shop. I love Munster cheese. I know. So good. Well, my mom always has Munster cheese at the so house. So does my mom. Is this a Jewish thing? <laughs> I because, hope so. Cause my mom, my mom's also, you know, was, she was born in uh, Bro- Brooklyn. Yeah. She's born in Brooklyn. There you go. Grew up long island. But like her thing is like, this is what we always had growing up in our house in California, but still it was thinly sliced. It had to be thinly sliced <laughs> Munster cheese, like thin, like really thin. Like she'll like sit there and <laughs> at the counter but it was not thin enough <laughs> it's like oh my god they're like it's like slicing so thin it's like barely sliced it's i know i know and it just like flops it's over the, no but it's like the best it is it's thinly so sliced good. cold monster like that like that and crispex are the two things that make me feel like i'm a kid again and i like they have both since become standard parts of my diet right now by the way and my kids are like obsessed as well so it's, it's just like funny but it yeah, worked, okay. it worked. Mon- no, go back. Okay, monster cheese, true. monster cheese. It's true. So my hole in the wall bagel shop is they're not doing monster cheese. I got mm. you got at best you got um, I think American and maybe cheddar. And I'm like, that's Ugh. fine. But like, if Ugh. I'm going to my parents' house, 
Yeah. I'll get a Munster cheese on the bagel. So yeah. I'll get a, I'll get a sesame bagel and I'll have, I'll put Munster cheese on it. And I also like, um, Munster cheese and tomato on it. And I really enjoy that. Um, I've also in, um, the, the end of, and the everything bagel is really great with anything. I'll have that with, I'll have that with cream cheese, um, eggs or Munster cheese. Okay. Yeah. Tuna salad is another great so option. Good. Yep. Um, and white then fish? The, are you a white fish girl? I'm not, no. I'm no. not, I'm not, but I will do, and they also have a pretty inexpensive lox bagel. So I'll do like, you could do an, and this is inexpensive for New York. So cover your ears. If you're like, oh my gosh, how could you? I, I think it's eight ninety nine. Oh, that's super cheap. Again, Essa bagels. I want to say it's like 15 bucks or some no, ludic no. ludicrous amount. And you're but it might, it might be twice. Onion. It might be. Yeah. So good. Hmm. I know. I know. I know. But here's, you know, okay. Here's my problem. I personally, when I lived in New York, at least would almost never get an actual sandwich from the bagel shop because I just, they put so much, they put like a brick of cream cheese on there. I just they can't do. with that. I can't, it doesn't taste good to me. And I also am so indecisive that I want like half my bagel yes. with like something and half of it with something else. And I don't know. Yeah. So I prefer to do my own thing. To your point, um, I, all the bagel orders that I just shared, I mainly ate at the bagel shop when I was working there from, I did the opening. This is, this speaks to how I work now where I don't work after 1 PM. I did the opening shift. So I was there at 5 AM with the guys baking the bagels. And then my shift was done at lunchtime. And I had during that time, a Bialy and maybe two bagels. Because <laughs> like, I'm on See, my bagel I all like day. I love that job. I just want it's like so fresh good. hot bagels. I just want to munch on hot bagels all day long. See, now yes. I get them shipped from New York, but they're like two days old and that's the best we can do. So <laughs> like, go back. it's very it sad. Ma it makes sense. It okay. makes sense. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. It's all yes. good. All good. I'm with um, you though. I'm with yeah. you. It's, it's best to have like, <laughs> it's best to have Tempty in the fridge and just spread at your leisure. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, so what, uh, what would you say your nutrition challenges are now? I mean, we can say you're quote unquote in recovery and, but everyone has challenges, myself included, regardless of what your history is. Um, yeah. What, what do you kind of, are there any struggles or things that you're working on right now with nutrition? Yeah. I think that, um, one of my, greatest challenges because I work in an industry and surrounded by people who are obsessed with aesthetics. And, um, as somebody who really, I, I really practice what I preach in that I do not, I understand aesthetic based goals, but I would rather live a, a life where my bones are healthy my heart is healthy. Uh, my ligaments, my tendons, my muscles are resilient. I'm less prone to injury. I can balance into my forties, fifties, sixties, seventies, eighties, be an independent person throughout these decades of my life. And that's what I, um, people who work with me tend to have the same goals and, uh, for themselves. Uh, that's why they come to me. And, uh, I really, I really pride myself on that. So I will say that it is very challenging to nourish myself throughout the day in an environment where people are not nourishing themselves. Um, and I, so I think that that is, I don't, I, I don't compare myself to other instructors. There's something there. It's become very like grossly popular to share what I eat in a day content on social mm -hmm. media platforms. And I see actually a lot of full-time fitness, uh, instructors doing this. And it's, I think it's at a disservice for the people that they follow, especially when they're not really eating much in their day. Um, so, so I think just optics can be challenging for me. I, um, but in terms of like actual things that are challenging for me is when I'm in a, um, marathon training cycle, the amount of food that I need to eat, I need to increase. So there's, 
there's a period where I am uncomfortable in my body, but I also know that that just means that I am fueling myself likely correctly. <laughs> mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So there's, there's that. Um, Cause I do want to make that clear to anyone who's listening. It's not like, I, I'm not of the belief that you can ever like, you're never fully at the finish line of your eating disorder recovery or your disordered behaviors, that it's something mm -hmm. that you just, you get better at, you, you, the voice gets quieter and you get better at navigating the, the discomfort. Yeah. hundred percent. I agree with that. As someone who also is in recovery from all this stuff, I am with you. <laughs> Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, that stuff's so hard and I mean, and I really appreciate all the content you put out that is very much fighting kind of the toxic, you know, fitness and health and wellness culture out there and really sending positive fueling and fitness messages into the inter internet, into the, whatever the void, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Um, so, you know, I appreciate your contribution and fighting for thank the you. good cause. So thank you. For, for all that. Um, one of the things um, that I appreciate that, or that makes me laugh that one of the things you do is the, the things that make your piss boil. <laughs> and I thought maybe we can do a nutrition edition. Oh, <laughs> There's another thing on your Instagram account, a series, and um, it's, it's very random. And I know it's not always nutrition related, no, but uh Oh, but I'm ready. Nate, I'm ready. You're ready. Okay. So let's just do uh random shit that makes your piss boil without, I think you say with as little context as you wish. All right. You're on. Right. Right. That, and that by the way, is because I see all these people just asking, well, why do you know? Now I've, now I've cut you off. Like I don't need to give a why I don't need to give a why I said what I said. So, um, yes. So random things that make my piss boil with as little context as I want nutrition addition. Let's start with the demonization of processed foods. Yep. Influencers pushing supplements specifically right now, colostrum. Oh God. <laughs> yep. Any sort of cleanse, like the parasite cleanse, cough, I coffee even, up your I ass know what that cleanse. Is. Oh yeah. Coffee enemas. No, thanks. It's like the, the parasite cleanse is apparently, um, and I learned this from, um, Kylie and Stevie, uh, oh, two other sports okay. registered dietitians that people are without so without any sort of diagnosis, like they haven't learned if they definitively have actually parasites, which are a serious thing. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're just raw dogging all these supplements to get the parasite Ugh. that they have not confirmed is actually in their body. Lovely. Out of their wow. body. How is that? Oh my God. I guess I'm not surprised by anything anymore. Yes. People, man. Let's so not do yeah, that. So I'll, that any any opportunity to get you to shit your pants is is what is, is what people will do to to for the aesthetic of fitness i really believe that and that's it's horrifying yeah. which it's is horrifying. crazy to me because people are paying me literally thousands of dollars to work with me so that they will stop shitting their pants but hey by all means why don't you go spend thousands of dollars to shit your pants that sounds awesome great have fun <laughs> like blind people i don't understand <sighs> and, and the way that it's just not regulated and how it's just still ex all these things just exist on grocery store shelves you know the di i call it diarrhea tea on my social <laughs> it's like it's still it's it still exists um diarrhea tea yeah uh I would say, you know, cottage tea, cottage cheese doesn't make my piss boil. It's how we're expecting too much of it. The same way that we did with cauliflower and, and zucchini. Um, just, just let it be like, that's where I'm like, I'm cool with cauliflower, like on top of on top of my English muffin, delish little honey oh, in, a, in nice. a bowl with my oatmeal. Lovely. But like, we're whipping it and we're like change. I got some like article or so oh, some someone was contacting me for quotes on like my favorite cottage cheese recipe trends 
hard pass. I did not take that one. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not your dietitian for that one. There are dietitians out there. I'm not putting my name on this. I just, I'm just not your person. I mean, I'm not a recipe person either, but also like, nope, I'll just, I'll stick with the cottage cheese with just some berries. Like, that's fine. Yeah. No, I'm aligned with you on that. Just, just let her be. Uh, I think I'm not, I'm not really pissed at. I would say from my years of being a vegetarian and a short time dabbling in veganism, I would say the thing that makes my piss boil are people who are like myself. I didn't give a shit about animal rights, but I uh, was obsessive and excessive at the time as to what I was putting in my body. So, and so I convinced myself that those options at a certain point were healthier and that's just not true. So that makes my piss boil um, because that still exists in, in the nutrition space. It's like, well, you can't, I, I care about, you don't really care about animals. It's okay. It's okay that you don't care about animals. Like let's not, let's not demonize people who are eating meat because they enjoy it and yeah, let them eat But meat. equally, I'm going to add one. Of, of things that make my piss boil yes carnivore diet people oh i just agreed. i just can't i just can't yes people who carnivore diet people and people um who put on their instagram bios whatever diet they're following <laughs> that's an immediate pass for me anyone who equates diet as a religion yes no. yes yes and yeah, it comes that with makes like me mad. they're in a photo with their cat that that's the profile <laughs> picture I watched the What I Eat, I, don't, I forget who, oh, a friend of mine forwarded this to me just because, you know, she knows I'm a di- dietitian. She was like, this just is so gross. And it was like some woman, it was a What I Eat in a Day, but like not, no, she wasn't like, she was just some random person posting a wedding. I'm like, okay, whatever. But it was, she's carnivore. And it was less just like, she had, oh yeah, she, okay. So it was, she was intermittent fasting until 12. And then she had like a 12 ounce ribeye slathered in butter with a side of, chicken something like that was like her first meal and then like her next meal was like a pork chop and like 12 more ounces of something else and like more butter and i'm just like first of all number one how do these people poop (laughs) number two correct like that's like just so much number three their grocery bills must be off the chart like meat is so expensive like who are these people who can just eat like a million pounds of meat in a day and also like I just, I just don't understand. Like it was just so gross. They have to be so gross. coffee enemas. I know. <laughs> or colostrum. It, it's, these are all the same people. I don't understand. It's the same person. I don't, just... Like I love myself a good steak. Like nothing wrong with meat. Same. Like I'm Jewish, but I eat pork. Like whatever. Like yes. love butter, but like all these things in this quantity. Like I, I don't understand how these people like digest or poop. Like I just don't understand. It's kind of mind boggling. They've Anywho. normalized also, yeah, they've also normalized behaviors that like, like not pooping is not normal. Like you are supposed to poop every yeah. day. I and think it was, it, Ky- I, I think it was Kylie who said, uh, we were talking about someone who was on the carnivore diet, um, who was giving her shit. And she was like, I would love to see a GI map on that guy. <laughs> and I was just like, yeah, his stool test results would be very interesting. Uh, but anyways, we digress. Yes. All right. Anything else to add to the list before we wrap up this chat? I think that's, I think I, I think that's all the piss I have to boil today. All right. That's a good one. Have you done a nutrition edition? I guess you kind of do like just random stuff. It's not themed. No, right? I never do did. These. This is my first right. time. So I think that needs to go on your next one. Nutrition edition. Shout me out. I'm down. <laughs> I will. include I will. some of these that we, we gave you some ideas here. We can throw the cottage cheese. <laughs> the carnivore diet we got some good ones um awesome well is there anything on the horizon for you other than i know your marathon but we're not going to talk about that because secret <laughs> anything else that you'd like to shout out or share with my listeners um about yourself um no i'm really enjoying this period of my life i love the summer um and i'm enjoying enjoying that and i uh I have, again, I have a marathon in the fall. Um, I have a lot of things professionally for me that are very exciting. I'm 
just launched this week, a virtual small group, uh, training program that, um, uh, they can re people, folks can reach out to me if they're interested in signing up for that, that will happen this fall. Um, and, uh, and then I'll have some sort of, I'm putting myself, uh, in a faraway land, which I also will not share. I, I think I've recently just told my husband that I'm going away. Um, I will go somewhere post marathon. Uh, I love to do a solo trip every year. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Awesome. Nice. Nice. Yes. Nice. All right. We're gonna do some quick bites questions and I'm going to send you on your way to enjoy your Friday evening or go to bed or whatever it is that you're doing. <laughs> Both. Yes. There. <laughs> Both, yes. Um, I wouldn't mind going to bed, but it is only not even four o'clock over here. So um, sorry. All right. What is your first favorite post race meal or snack? Oh well, um, generally I make sure I have a bottle, so it it tends to be liquid nutrition, um, and it'll be a scoop of peanut butter, uh, peanut butter protein powder, scoop of scratch or chata, banana, almond milk, and then yeah. and then shortly after I'll have a a full meal. Okay. I like the horchata. I tried that recently. It's really good. Yes. Yeah. Um, worst race nutrition experience if you've had one. Oh yeah. 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 I, I went to the, uh, I cracked myself at a marathon and that's because I had too much fiber and vegetables the days leading into it. You live, you learn real yeah. quick. <laughs> yep. Yep. I've told the story many times, but my first marathon in Paris, for some reason, I thought it'd be a good idea eating a lot of whole wheat pitas. Not a good oh, idea. No, it's not. Yeah. Not a good carb load we choice for me at least. We learned the lesson so that you guys yes. don't have to. Yes. Yes. Um, also like, how are you even an endurance runner if you haven't pooped your pants at one point or pooped on the side of the road somewhere? So it's That's just what kind I keep of part. Hearing. Yeah. Part of, part of the deal. Um, biggest cooking catastrophe if you've had one i know you're not you say you're not really a cook oh, so i don't know if you've had one but i cook every night like i actually enjoy uh, okay. i i do like my husband's a very good cook so he'll, mm. he's great at but i i make really low hanging fruit like every night so it's a lot of like so tonight i'll have cheese tortellini and i'll have some like chicken sausage as well cuz i got a big run tomorrow um i'll have like frozen i'll have mac and cheese like things like that um, mm -hmm. and I love salmon. So I season salmon. So this is the, this is the story. The story is, um, the way I season salmon is I put, um, I put in the broiler salmon. I put, um, Dijon garlic, aioli mustard on top. And mm -hmm. then I, I put everything but the bagel seasoning Yep, mm -hmm. as well as, um, garlic powder and diced red onion. Oh, oh my that's God. That's fancy. That's oh, complicated. I know, but I'm really lazy. So I'll, I'll make sure like everything I just said really doesn't take, it takes five minutes. Like I'm okay. buying diced onion. I don't, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta live a little. Okay. I gotta live a little. Yeah. Um, and I will never forget where, um, I came home and I go from kind of hungry to hangry real quick. And mm. I shouldn't have done that. I should have had a snack and we learned these lessons and I, uh, just poured all over my, my roasted veggies and my salmon. Um, it was dark, so there was no garlic powder, but, um, cinnamon was the thing that I poured all over everything. Oh, wow. That's a bold choice. <laughs> and I was so upset. So upset. It happened and then it happened again, but this time with sugar. And I think that was almost worse. And I was like, this Wait, is- Wait, did you think it was garlic powder or you were just looking for an alternative? No, I thought it was garlic powder. Cause we have really, oh. we have the same brand of seasoning, just like in, ah. and we have it in different containers that are okay. not labeled. We, we learned it hasn't happened. Yeah, I was like, I was like, okay. I was like, that sounds like a, a poor choice <laughs> set up. No, I, I picked it up by accident. It, mm, it wasn't. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Yeah. So anyway. I was going to question for a minute when you were just like, oh yeah, cinnamon. Delicious. Just put it. <laughs> I mean, I feel like you could have like a little bit of a cinnamon hint in things, like a little tiny bit of cinnamon on a roasted carrot. Nice. Delicious. Just right. randomly spewing cinnamon on a bunch of no. things. Not, no, not no, so no. good. No. It was, it was not by, it was not, a, it was not a choice I was, I was making. Got that it. Was okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How do you like your eggs cooked? Um, I like an omelet because I find that I'm incredibly unsatisfied if I just have like a couple of eggs because they're very, 
you know, people, t- and I'm, I'm sure you hear this all day. People will say like, oh, I get enough protein. I'll have an egg. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like one egg on a slice of toast. I'm like, I'm like oh, like really? Barely like, a snack. Right. I'm like, what? So like, I'll go to the diner with my girlfriends. This is where we'll have, there are very few places, as you know, like I can't eat at a small plate place. I need yeah, yeah. substance. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. in New York, when you need substance, you go to a diner, you go to a Chinese food restaurant. Um, you go to, you go to, um, a lot of Dominican restaurants actually have good size servings, Peruvian restaurants. So we have options, but like, it can't mm-hmm. be tapas. So yeah, I'll go yeah, to the yeah. diner and I'll have like a big old omelet with feta cheese and veggies. Yum. And that's my favorite form of egg. Awesome. Got it. What are your comfort foods? Cheese tortellini, a bagel near my parents' house. And honestly, it sounds weird, but I really like, I love salmon. So salmon just makes me feel cozy. Hey, there's no wrong answers here. You don't have to say like mac and cheese or whatever, you know, it's yeah, whatever yeah. is comforting and delicious to you. Yeah. Um, what is your favorite ice cream flavor? I like an ice cream bar with a hard shell. Like I like mm. the crunch. Yum. So it would be like, a like they have this like sea salt caramel base and it has like a chocolate almond shell that's fairway or something has, has a brand that I like there. Um, yeah. Okay. And last question, top three items of gear that are most essential to your active lifestyle. I would say my, uh, my Brooks ghost max, which is a cushiony kind of ride that, um, I love to wear when I run. a sports bra with pockets so I can carry all my gels and not have it get sweltering in my pockets. Um, and, uh, I would say, I don't know. Um, I just like things with pockets. So a bra with pockets, backpack, maybe (laughs) back, right, right. Right. I do have a, yes, I have a very, I have a, it's considered, I guess, a fancy backpack, but it is incredibly, it's very big. It has two cup What kind holders. of backpack is it? It's a Dagny Dover. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> it's a, it's some sort of, it's some sort of, um, you know, because, because I use it for work, it's a write-off, Claire. Okay. There so- you go. You got you got, you got yourself a bougie fitness backpack. Like do it. I'm not judging. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> I know the way I know the way and the way I get is... myself a backpack, except I literally work from home and just walked from 10 feet away to my closet. To do this stuff. Don't need one anymore. But, but when I was in New York, had my house on my back all day long, all day. Yes. It's very, mm-hmm. it's critical. It's critical to our success. So I would say that. Yeah. Uh, pockets, backpacks, sports, whatever I said sounds right to me. <laughs> pockets, all the pockets. Awesome. Amanda, this was so much fun. Thanks for joining me today. And where can everyone find you online if they want to give you a follow or join one of your classes? Sure. So if you're in, uh, if you're in New York city, uh, I'm at Equinox and I mainly stay above, uh, above Columbus circle. Um, I'm a upper West side kind of girl. Uh, so you can find me at Equinox, uh, via the app or on my website, Amanda S cats.com. I'm mainly on Instagram. So you can find me at Amanda underscore cats, K-A-T-Z with two Zs. I also like Claire uh, hosts a podcast called Between Two Coaches where Claire will be on this fall uh, if pending her availability. Um, yes, happy to be there. <laughs> good, good. And um, I think that's, I think that's really it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Have a Claire, wonderful thank Friday you for night. Having me. Thank yeah. you. Yay. All right. That is our episode for today. I hope you enjoyed my chat with Amanda. I most definitely did. She is so much fun to talk to. Um, if you are enjoying the show, do make sure that you are following it, that you're subscribing or wherever you're listening to. If you have a minute, what would be so helpful is if you could give it a five-star rating, if you could write a review, even better. And if you could share it with a friend, if you think someone might enjoy this show, I would be so appreciative. 
Also, if you want to throw a few bucks towards the show to support it, you I have a Patreon page. It's um, $6 a month for a, you get a free hat and you get all kinds of other perks or you can, of course, donate whatever you wish. I also have those discount codes I mentioned earlier and you can head on over to my shop page, my website to grab those. And of course, if you ever want to get in touch, my email is claire at eatforendurance.com. I often do a podcast based on listener questions or topic requests. So please send them my way. I'd love to hear from you guys. Thank you so much. And I'll see you guys next time.